February 27th, 2009, the Vermont Law School awarded John Casella its first annual Green Innovators Award. John is the CEO and founder of Casella Waste Services, which operates a landfill in Bethlehem, New Hampshire. Casella's landfill is located in the Mount Washington Valley, just hundreds of feet from the White Mountain National Forest and the Amanusik River. In 1976, the Bethlehem Zoning Board approved a four-acre landfill for the site, but after various legal challenges, Casella has now forced the size of the landfill to grow to 51 acres. Within the next year, this landfill will have been filled to capacity, and Casella is looking for new ways to fit more trash into the 51-acre site. Recently, Casella proposed an expansion that would have been inside the 51 acres and relied on the use of berms to hold back a higher amount of trash. The New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services denied this permit based on poor engineering of the berms and contaminated wells that had VOCs and tracers of bromide. Casella's Bethlehem landfill has been controversial for decades, primarily because of its never-ending expansion and because of environmental problems at the site. Given Casella's track record, many in Bethlehem strongly believe that it's inappropriate that Casella receive an environmental award. Here are some excerpts from the Vermont Law School's award ceremony for John Casella. Well, it's uh, welcome and it's my great pleasure to introduce John Casella. I've known John for a few years when I uh, was the environmental commissioner in Vermont. I used to uh, regulate John, as uh, you will remember along with a lot of other businesses uh, in Vermont. And um, John is the uh, chairman and CEO of Casella Waste Systems, a um, homegrown, Vermont-grown uh, Vermont uh, business that has expanded regionally throughout New England and the Northeast uh, to become one of the principal solid waste recycling and waste management uh, companies in our part of the world. Now, John could have done the easy thing, like Ben and Jerry's, and gone into the ice cream business. <laughs> but no, uh, he wanted to tackle one of the most difficult problems that society has, which is what to do with our garbage. Now, we call it solid waste, but it's garbage, and it's trash, and it's a difficult thing to manage. William Ruckel's house, uh, whom most of you in this room, I assume, know of, when he took over the leadership of Browning Ferris Industries, he once famously quipped, everybody wants us to pick it up, but nobody wants us to put it down. <laughs> nobody wants a landfill in their backyard, but everybody wants their trash to go somewhere else. John is the somewhere else. And by the way, John is no stranger to controversy. And John knows that if he steps out of line, there are people like me and many others to point it out and make sure he comes back into line if that's what's required. He's in a difficult business. This is not an easy business to stay in 100% compliance 100% of the time in every single facility that they have to operate. So it is indeed a great pleasure to welcome John and let him tell us now the details of how we can reinvent an industry from consumption to sustainability. Please give a warm Thank you uh, very much. I have to admit that um, it's a, a bit of a surprise to be here in front of you today. Go ahead. Yes. Hi, um, my name is Seth Goldstein. I'm, I'm not a student, but I, I drove here with some of my friends from Bethlehem, New Hampshire, where uh, Mr. Casella has a landfill. And, uh, you know, our town has been struggling uh, fighting this landfill for uh, several decades and I, I honestly think that it's great that uh, 
that you're making efforts on the gas to energy. I think that that has to happen. But there's also a dark side to the to the landfill business, and there's the dark side to this company as far as we're concerned, because because we feel like there's legitimate health concerns, legitimate environmental concerns that should close this Bethlehem landfill once and for all. Um, it's filled to its outer limits at the current point, the 51 acres. And my question to you, John, is, you know, recently DES <coughs> denied your permit to expand in Bethlehem. And it was based on um, what they call, uh, I, I can't, I'm paraphrasing here, but there was, it was based on dangerous engineering of the berms that you wanted to build 40 foot tall, and it was also based on um, the wells that were showing that there are VOCs and tracer of, a, of something called bromide, which indicates that the landfill could be leaking. You're now suing DES, New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, and I just want to ask you, do you, do you see, do, do you, can you truly say to this class and to this school that you think that there's fair balance in all this, that I know you might be doing something good with this gas thing, but do, do you really, I, I don't see it crowing across the, 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 the board, and I don't see our town being treated fairly, and I don't, I don't see you acting properly. Um, I'll just close with this one sentence that I find astonishing that was sent from one of your lawyers to New, uh, New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, and it says, NCES, which is your company, um, the, the, the subsidiary in Bethlehem, maintains that New Hampshire DES has no lawful authority to deny modifications to its stage four permit based on contaminants in the release detection wells. And you guys are all lawyers, so that might make more sense to you. But basically, it's just saying you're, you're claiming that New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services don't, doesn't have the right to regulate pollution. No, no. I think you, you got it wrong. Um, it's a fair question, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm happy to leave you to answer it. Um, we, um, it's really unfortunate the uh, place that we find ourselves with regard to Bethlehem. The facility was there for 20 years when we bought it. Um, the facility uh, had a dispute ongoing. Um, we've been to the Supreme Court several times with the facility, and each time when we won, we went back to the community trying to find a win-win and try to put ourselves in a position where we could really create um, a private-public partnership and create a win-win. Through the course of that, those years, we built playgrounds, we, we excavated the old unlined landfill in Bethlehem and put it into the line landfill. So um, while there's no question there's controversy, there is no question that, um, unfortunately, from our perspective, um, Bethlehem represents, um, in, in our view, um, a, a real disappointment in terms of our ability to get through that issue from a public relations, uh, from a community perspective. We don't have that problem with uh, any of the other communities. We don't, we don't have that problem in terms of our other host community relationships. Um, it's not. You know, I'm it's not. It's not to say that there aren't problems. So it, don't don't take it. You know, literally, there are always problems. But okay. for the most part, we don't have that kind of relationship that, um, unfortunately, we've had for years in in uh, Bethlehem. As far as the agency is concerned, and as far as you know, we um, from a regulatory standpoint, we know full well who has responsibility to regulate. But the permit process. Um, has to be born in technical facts. Um, and when we're moving towards political decisions as opposed to technical decisions, you can count on us fighting those kinds of situations. And um, that's our responsibility to do that. Um, it's our responsibility to make sure that, uh, that if we believe that that's the case, that we um, fight that battle. You know, the integrity of the permit process needs to be maintained. And, but we certainly know who the regulators are, and they know us in many, many states. And I think we clearly will stand behind our record um, unequivocally. And I can tell you one more thing. Every facility for 34 years that our organization has touched is better off for having been touched by Casella. Not okay.
Thank you. Uh, I, I, I think you, that maybe we'll yeah. take the questions over across the way, if that's okay with everybody from here on out. Thanks a lot for coming. We have refreshments, as I understand it, in uh, Chase Community Center. And John won't run away. <laughs> <laughs>